everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimusAstamp.com. Today I'm using supplies from the December 2020 card kit, including this stamp set, which is called Joyful Season, and this cardstock, which is Midnight Green. I've cut the cardstock to four and a quarter by three inches, and now I'm going to be stamping one of the greetings from the stamp set. I've chosen my greeting, I'm going to place it on the top area. I'm also going to use that really large image from the stamp set and I'm putting that at the very bottom and having it nestle in in with that greeting. Putting my magnet down and then closing the door of my MISTI to transfer the stamps to the door. And then I'm going to prep my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. I'm going to be using a metallic embossing powder today. So I wanted to prep that area so that I could prevent any embossing powder from going in areas where I don't want it. I'm pressing that down really well to transfer the image. And now I have my stamped areas. I'm going to be applying some gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. It's a nice gold shade. And I'll hit that with my heat tool until it's smooth and melted. And I'm gonna keep this heat tool moving quite a bit so I can prevent any warping of this cardstock. So after I have all of my embossing complete, I have the basic design uh, done. But I wanted to add a gold border, so I'm dragging my Versamark ink pad along the borders of my cardstock and then dipping the cardstock into my embossing powder. This is going to put embossing powder just on the edge and only where I applied the ink. And then I can uh, tap off any excess and then hit that with my heat tool until it's smooth and melted. And when you're melting embossing powder on the edge, it melts super, super fast. So to add a little bit of color to this image at the bottom, I thought I would use some colored pencils. I'm using Polychromos colored pencils from Faber Castell. And I thought maybe to make the, the red berries a little brighter, brighter, I would first do a layer of white colored pencil and then go over the top with a red shade. Um, I don't know if that, that really helped that much since this is a very deep colored cardstock. So for the green areas on the leaves, I just colored directly with the green shade that I wanted. I added a little brown where the pine cone is and then red for these other areas. So now it's time to add a little bit of trim. I've got some trim from Tim Holtz and I've reserved that bottom edge for this trim. That's why I didn't add any of the gold embossing powder to it. And I'm adhering the trim using some express it tape. That would be nice to have the adhesive just run along right along the bottom. So I'll remove the release paper and then I'm going to find a, a really flat area of the ribbon, something that's not too wrinkled, and press that down onto my cardstock. I'll lift it up and wrap this velvet ribbon around to the back side. And this is going to give it a nice clean edge. I won't have any uh, torn edges showing. So after I had that complete, it was time to prepare my card base. And my card today is going to be an A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm scoring my card stock uh, at five and a half to create a top folding card. The card stock I'm using today is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound card stock. I put adhesive on the back of my stamped panel and then I pressed it down onto my card front. So that finishes the card, but I thought I would take one of the envelopes that come in the kit. This is a metallic red envelope and do a little bit of stamping on it as well. So I'm prepping the flap area with an anti-static powder tool and then stamping that very large image once again in Versamark ink. I'll apply that same gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and then I'll be able to hit this with a heat tool and melt uh, all of the powder. So this paper is particularly thin because it is an envelope. So just keep your powder, your uh, heat tool moving and you won't get too much warping. I really liked the border on the card around the green cardstock. So I thought I would add that same border onto this envelope by rubbing the ink pad along the edge of the closed envelope. For any areas that got a little too thick, I used a dry paintbrush just to sweep away any of that embossing powder. And then I heat set the edges until everything was smooth and metallic and melted. 
So here's the basic design of my envelope. I'm gonna go ahead and put some Christmas postage onto my envelope, have a forever stamp and two vintage stamps. And then I'm using some Fine Tech pearlescent paint to paint on the recipient's address. I do have her permission. I have Sophia's permission, so thank you so much, Sophia. Um, she had gave me permission to use her address on an envelope. So no worries about sharing an address that shouldn't be, sh be shared. I'm using a very small paintbrush for this today, but you could actually use a water brush or a Pentel Aquash brush. I think those work equally as well, especially the smaller Aquash brushes because they have a very springy bristle and they come to a very, very fine point. So I like to use an Aquash brush on envelopes for addressing the address as well. Just adding the zip or postal code here at the bottom. And then I'm going to take a very, very, very tiny brush and write on my return address. I think you equally probably could have used a gold gel pen for this part, especially since it is such a small area. Uh, but since I had this small paintbrush, I decided to go ahead and use the same Fine Tech gold paint that I'd used on the front of the envelope on this back of the flap. Just putting my address on there and I'm making sure I have my full address. So one thing you want to remember with something like this where you're using a water medium for the address is you probably will want to set it with a distress microglaze. You can put a thin layer of that, just avoid the postage, and you should be great. I don't show that in this video because I wanted to let the watercolor really dry and set a little bit longer, but uh, before I mail this, I will be using some Distress Microglaze, and I'll link that for you down in the supply section if you're interested in purchasing some of that. So that is the envelope and card for today. If you would like to pick up the December 2020 card kit, you can do that over at simusstamp.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon.